Good morning, I'm Angelo Castro the Third. I'm Angela and we are the Castro. Welcome to a Thursday episode of uh, Brunch. Of course. Madaming uh, pag-uusapan, may pa walk out, walk out. Oh, ano ano pang uh, balita meron and of course all coming back daw de ba deja vu oh, deja vu and of course may mga good news na tayo nga uh, issue share of course oh, all right and uh, all of that because we're serving you news in a countdown all that before your second cup of coffee this is brunch Ito, some good news para sa kababayan natin and kicking off our countdown let's start off with Gilas our basketball team is inching closer to booking a spot in the Paris Olympics. This comes after they pulled off a massive upset against Latvia in the FIBA Olympic qualifiers. Gilas shocked the host country from the get-go and secured the victory 89-80. to In order to advance to the semifinals, they must take down Georgia later tonight, 8.30 p.m. Philippine time. Only the winner of the tournament will secure the lone Paris Olympic ticket up for grabs. So to advance, it's either we uh, beat uh, Georgia outright or lose uh, at least under 19 under points. Under 19 Kasi points. Because my, my quotient system. And as you were saying kanina, di ba, uh, Tim Cohn employed a triangle offense. Yes, as which we, is... Um, oh, as we all know, the triangle offense is a mechanized offensive uh, uh, design for uh, sa 1990s, specifically by Phil Jackson and Tex Winter. Mm -hmm. Sa Chicago Bulls team that won 72 games and won ano, uh, five, nag-back-to-back uh, -back sila. And yung offense na ginamit doon is yung uh, zone, ano, na zone, yung triangle. Triangle offense. Oh, nagulat siguro ang Latvia, it's because they were expecting a perimeter kind of offense, which is predicated on three-pointers, but apparently, hindi natin ginawa yun. Oh. We use the... So, we, doon tayo nag-stick doon sa kung ano yung kusan mag magaling ang Pilipinas, di ba? Yun nga, yung tri triangle offense, yung 90s pa Actually, yun, di triangle is, a triangle is, ano, uh, western. So, western oh, form oh, of oh. offense. Pero ginagawa natin na uh, oh, no, effective. And, no effective, but no team anymore in the NBA uses uh, triangles. Obsolete. 90s pa yun, eh. It's diba? obsolete because puro three points na ngayon. Yes. Sa triangle offense kasi, everybody has to move. Para everybody gets to touch the ball, di ba? Oh, oh. Umiikot yung bola. May mga mini, mini, ano, small triangles on the court. So yun, we have to beat uh, la, uh, Georgia later. But uh, may laban tayo sa Georgia. It's because uh, Latvia yung tinalo natin. Mm -hmm. Latvia beat Georgia by 28 points already. Yes. So if, if, if you uh, do the math, kung tinalo natin ang, Georgia, ang Latvia by mm -hmm. 8 points, tinalo ng ng uh, Latvia ang Georgia. That means uh, understood na kaya natin ang Georgia. Oh, oh. But Georgia has an NBA player, si Sandro Mamushkabeli mm -hmm. ng San Antonio Spurs. So 6'11 player yan na bata, oh, oh. na 24 year old, na medyong malakas. Whatever happens, syempre, uh, ano tayo, go for <laughs> oh, ano the last de de Ako definitely kaya natin, ng, kaya natin manalo sa Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, medyong tricky lang yung semifinals. Pero itong pagkapanalo natin sa Gilas versus Latvia, Ah, uh, ito yung pangalawa na eh, no? Na, na, na first hindi pala, lang. first lang kasi since the 1960s. No, this is the na first. Hindi, hindi tayo nakapanalo na kinalaban natin sila. The, uh, this is the first time, I think, in a long, long, yeah, long time that we've beaten a European team. Yes. Oo, kasi Asian teams lang usually ang naitata na tatalo natin. Oo. So, All right, congrats, congratulations. Uh, Mainit-init yung laban kahapon. Oh. Talagang uh, natuwa sila kay Justin Brownlee. Oh. Yung iba na puyat para panoorin yun yung game na yun uh, sa, para samahan ang uh, Gilas Pilipinas. We won by 9 points, no? 9 yes, points. 80, uh, 89, 89, 80. 80. Oh. All right, let's uh, continue with our countdown. Siyempre, sports pa rin tayo. Running to our ninth spot are our new Olympic qualifiers. Two hurdlers have recently booked their tickets to the 2024 Paris Olympics. Lauren Hoffman qualified for the women's 400-meter hurdles event, while John Cabang Tolentino is set to play at the men's 110-meter hurdles, with 22 athletes representing the Philippines at the upcoming Summer Games. This is now the biggest contingent we had since the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. Team Philippines is currently in a training camp in Metz, France. Oh, 
2022 eh. Diba? Parang nung we were starting to uh, report about this, uh -oh. nag-start tayo ng 9, yes. naging 12, naging 50, uh -oh. tapos ngayon 20. Kasi majority, of, majority of the qualifiers ngayon nangyayari. Uh -oh. And namamayagbag naman talaga tayo sa, ano, eh, Maganda, uh -oh. sa individual sports. Mm -hmm. We have uh, very good boxers. We have, uh, Yan, tapos yung weightlifting. Ni. Weightlifting. And we have very good uh, track and field athletes. Diba? May rowing din tayo. Yes. Oo, oh, madami. Medyo, o, yun yung uh, first uh, uh, woman, di ba? Oh, na makakasali. First mga woman natin, Pilipina. Mga individual sports, mga lakas tayo. Oh, yes. Ang dami na. Siyempre, ang gusto, lang, ang gusto rin ng mga kababahe natin, basketball sana. Diba? Sana, di ba? We are uh, crossing our fingers. Anyway, let's see. Uh, tonight po ang laban ng uh, Gilas versus Georgia, which we should win naman. So. Yes. Whatever happens, siyempre. Uh, go Gilas pa rin. <laughs> All right, mm -hmm. let's, let's go, continue. let's go. Sizzling at the 8th spot is the recently closed Sofitel Philippine Plaza. The Labor Department has settled the dispute between the hotel's management and its displaced workers. Under the settlement agreement, the displaced workers will receive benefit packages, salary raises, and bonuses. If a displaced worker refuses the separation package, they should be re-employed should Sofitel reopen under the Philippine Plaza Holdings Management. The hotel's labor union head, Nestor Cabada, said the settlement agreement is a win for them. Sofitel recently closed its doors to guests due to safety concerns. Yung mga manggagawa po ng Sofitel, on May 8, ay binigyan ko ng notice of termination po. Kaya ang position po ng Aming union ay dapat po walang tanggalan. Nung kagabi po, nung July ito, ay nagkaroon po ng agreement. I, I think it's not only a victory of the workers, it's victory of the hotel. Ayun. Mm -hmm. Talagang nilabi nila yan eh. Since, yeah. it, since it was announced na supposedly magsasara nga itong Sofitel, talagang nilabi ng mga empleyado na magpatuloy pa rin sila sa pagtatrapaho nila. If they nila. reopen under yes. uh, Philippine Plaza Holdings. Mm -hmm. Pero may mga nagsasabi kasi yung mga legal experts na ang pwedeng gawin ng management is open under a different majority ho uh, holdings company na na tapos minority na lang Philippine Holdings they wala nang they don't need to absorb mm -hmm. anymore these uh, workers may may run around dito sana naman hindi ganoon but if they're Pero looking hindi, yun nga yung kasunduan na no, oh, oh. if eh. they open under Philippine Plaza Holdings ang problema if may nag-merge na bigger company tapos na wala sa majority ng Philippine Plaza Holdings mm -hmm. and is taken over by another corporation then the question is uh, will they have to reapply Yun nga eh, tapos kasi I remember before sila nagkaroon ng kasunduan dito dahil nga pinaglalaban ng mga empleyado yung karapatan nga nila na makapagtrabaho muli under this uh, management, eh sabi nila they will take this case to the uh, international scene. Diba? And then uh, meron ding report dito na lumalabas noong June 2023 from, uh, 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 of course, sabi nga nila na Uh, mm. tinano, uh, tawag dito um, tinanong or sinabihan o yeah. nag-usap uh, they have asked the government service insurance system which owns the land where Sofitel stands to extend its yes, lease sinakalis. period until 2041 mm. to allow uh, to allow it to recover investment blah 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 and to refurbish wow. the hotel so merong extension no Oh, of the the lease oh, contract pwede, pwede, pwede naman kasi ituloy yung uh, lease contract na yon kahit hindi na majority owner ang Philippine Plaza eh. Kasi ang, ang legal run around this, they could still own a minority stake, pero majority owner will be another company. Pag, mm -hmm. pag may ibang majority owner na, yun ang question na, will they still have to honor the agreement ng collective bargaining with the union? It's because, iba na ang majority holder eh. Parang discretion na nila eh, kung foreign entity ba ito, kung or another entity, kung gusto nila i-hire to under a different brand. Kung talaga, kaya nga sinasabi ng mga workers eh, ano, baka talagang uh, gusto nila buwagin lang yung union eh. Yeah. ba diba? Yun yung kanilang pinaglalaban. Pero, Pero yung iba kasi, natin. yung mga Pero, kawawa dito, yung mga, yung mga tenure, aging, eh. mga yes. approaching tenure already, kawawa sila, it's because, it's because medyo nasa crossroads sila, do I uh, hold out and hope na baka mag-reopen? Pero gano'ng katagal wala akong kita? Or, kunin ko na tong separation, separation package. package. Pero how significant uh, the is the separation package? will package? be released 15 days after its opening na hindi ka pumasok. No, in other words, kung ano yung computation nito. Yes. Kasi usually it's, di ba, uh, one month's pay, two month's pay for every year's of service, di ba? 
So, eh, alam mo naman, eh, gano'ng kahirap ang buhay Kaling ngayon. Kaling pa naman dyan sa Sofitel, di ba, yung mga services nila, yung, yung uh, customer service ng, ng mga empleyado Ay, uh, dyan. Ano yun, ano, uh, one of the iconic hotels yan, uh, kasama mo yung Manila Hotel. So, Philippine Plaza pa noon yun eh, nabutan ko yun, oh. Philippine Plaza Hotel. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, anyway, some areas will continue to experience rains in the next 24 hours. The uh, intertropical convergence zone is affecting Palawan, where scattered rains are expected. The easterlies will also bring scattered rains over the regions of Caraga and Davao, and isolated rains over Cagayan Valley, Aurora, Quezon, Bicol, and eastern Visayas. Metro Manila and the rest of the country may also expect rains due to localized thunderstorms. Yan po yung ating uh, update okay. uh, para po sa ating weather for today. Kasi nga, uh, when we left the house, so tayo, di ba, for sa yeah. natin, medyo umaambon-ambon na siya, drizzling na. Here sa atin, medyo, pa kita na. pa naman yung araw yeah, natin yung sa weather. likod. Kita weather. pa yung background natin. Uh-huh. But uh, yun po ang ating uh, uh, weather update for today. Okay, let's move on to the next. Aita, the Department of Health has warned again, again about the expected rise in leptospirosis cases during rainy season. So, what can we do to prevent this? Mobile Journal Francis Orsho has the story. Ngayong tag-ulan, uso na naman ang iba't ibang klase ng sakit kasama na dyan ang leptospirosis na madalas nakukuha sa tubig baha. Yung akala mong lagnat, baka leptospirosis at kidney injury na pala. Yan ang kwento ng isang pasyente na ibinahagi niya sa social media app na TikTok. Kita sa kanyang post ang tila paghina ng kanyang katawan, paninilaw at pamumula ng mata, pati na skin rushes. Ang mga ganyang sintomas, ilan lang sa kadalasang nararanasan ng mga tinatamaan ng leptospirosis. Pero ano ba ang sakit na yan? Ang leptospirosis ay isang sakit na nakukuha mula sa mga pagkaka-expose natin mula sa ihi ng mga infected na animals. No? Usually, ang nangyayari ay kapag may flood water, no, lalo ngayon na tag-ulan. Paliwanag pa ng eksperto, leptospira ang tawag sa bakterya na dumadapo sa mga daga. Pero pwede rin itong maka-infect sa ibang hayop tulad ng mga asot pusa. Sa tala ng Department of Health, higit 800 na ang kaso ng leptospirosis sa bansa mula January 2024 hanggang nitong June 15. Mas mababa ng kalahati mula sa higit 1,700 cases sa parehong petsa noong 2023. Pero nilinaw ng DOH na hindi dapat magpakampante, lalo't nakikita ang pagtaas ng kaso ng leptospirosis ngayong tag-ula na. Kaya sa mga may mataas na exposure sa sakit na ito, lalo na yung mga madalas lumusong sa baha, maging maingat at magpakonsulta sa doktor kapag may naramdaman. In 2 to 30 days, po pwede makaranas ang pasyente ng wide range of symptoms. Po pwede magkaroon ng lagnat, pananakit ng ulo, pagchichills, man lamang, po pwede rin na magkaroon ng mga body aches, pagsusuka. At yung ayaw natin ay yung naninilaw yung mga balat ninyo, nagkakaroon din ng pagkakaroon ng pumumula ng mata, pananakit ng tiyan, pagdadayariya and rashes. Pero kung mas matindi raw ang epekto ng sakit sa pasyente, maaring magresulta ito sa liver o kidney failure o di kaya pagkakaroon ng meningitis. Una nang nagpaalala si Health Secretary Chodoro Herbosa na iwasan ang paglusong sa baha. At kung hindi may iwasan, magsuot ng bota at hugasan agad ang katawan ng malinis na tubig at sabon. Hinihimok din ng kalihim ang mga lokal na pamahalaan na linisin ang drainage system at kontrolin ang pagdami ng mga daga para mabawasan ang paggalat ng leptospirosis sa mga tao. Sabi nga, mahal magkasakit. Kaya para makaiwas sa sakit, simulan natin yan sa pag-iingat. Mobile journalist Francis Orsho po, hatid ang mukha ng balita. Yan, simple warning lang. Pag may baha, huwag lulusong unless meron kang uh, proper protection. Diba, may, may nabibenta Bota. sila ngayon. Kahit online, yung mga rubber boots. Mm-hmm. Diba, or kaya gloves, rub, rub, rubber gloves. Kasi pag may sugat kang maliit, tapos may mga feces ng dagaw, ihi sa tubig, pumasok sa sugat mo, ayan na, leptospirosis ang aabutin mo. Mm-hmm. Pero speaking of Department of Health, diba yesterday we were mm. talking about it, yung uh, uh, they plan to change the name, pero hindi pa naman daw sigurado yun, ano? Uh, pero diba pinag-usapan natin, yeah. dito, siguro mas importante, mas asikasuhin nila yung uh, pagbabayad dito sa mga healthcare workers, yung mga nagtrabaho during the COVID-19 pandemic. And you said, baka naman yung DBM, di pa nare-release pa rin yung budget. Mm. We have a breaking news kasi uh, 20 minutes ago, yung Department of Budget and Management will release na yung remaining 27 billion unpaid emergency allowances of healthcare workers tomorrow. Yeah, and so, so sabi ko nga ito sa DBM, ito san yes. ito san sa DOH ang yes. ang delay na. Okay. At least good, uh, mababayaran na sila. 
Exactly. All right. At patuloy natin uh, babantayan yung issue na yan. But for the meantime, coming up, the NBI says the other Alice Go may have been instructed to use the name to confuse the authorities. And the Philippines and China held a meeting to de-escalate the tension in the West Philippine Sea. A tale of three goes. <laughs> Marami tayong pag-uusapan na. So we are just getting started mga kapatid. More of our top 10 news when brunch returns. Keep it here on One News. Good morning! You're still watching Brunch here on One News. Happy Thursday! Oi, hello sa mga loyal viewers natin sa across our mm -hmm. social media accounts. We have Sam Pokemon Go, Paolo Apostol, Mina Bernales, uh, good from the Jesse Mendes team. Good morning sa inyo lahat. And of course, we have Vlad and we have Hiner. All our, Sila Ralph Domingo. Binagitan. Ralph Domingo. Dito, wala pa naman siyang... Uh... Gary Field. Gary Estrada Sam tuloy. <laughs> Gary Field. Sam Pokemon Go. Go. Uh, Juan Miguel. Kung nang tiyatanong po, ano, ano yung nakikita niyo mga makukulay na pagkain dito? Mm -hmm. We have, of course, uh, ube puto. We have ah, from Pangasinan. White puto. And anong tawag dito? Okay, kuchinta. <laughs> and of course, meron tayong peanut butter and bread. <laughs> Bakit mo ba akong pagtatawa na pag sinasabi ko yung kuchinta? Kasi hindi niya, hindi niya kaya i-pronounce. Kuch, kuchinta. Yun. Diba? Yeah, batiin ko lang itong nasa YouTube natin. Ano, si Mark Santiago, mm. si Anig Villa. Ito yung laging uh, present sa atin. Of course, si, <clears throat> si Ronald Max. Stay kilala ko ito. Ah. Ganito sa programa ni Manong Teda. Hi, Ronald. Tsaka si Gary Go na lagi rin nanonood sa atin. Kala si uh, Esther Abaya. Tita mm. Esther, good morning. Kala ko si Ronald McDonald. Hindi naman. <laughs> okay. Hey, Jego. Oo. Oh. Pingi ako. Mamaya. Game. <laughs> Ayaw ko bigla. Let's go! <laughs> Going straight now to our seventh spot. A Filipino-American woman died after being pushed into an oncoming train in San Francisco, California. Now, the victim was identified as 74-year-old Corazon Dandan from San Mateo County. Dandan was rushed to San Francisco General Hospital where she later died. She was allegedly pushed by 49-year-old suspect Trevor Belmont into a moving train. Belmont was arrested and will be booked into San Francisco County Jail. No, wala pa tayong uh, full details kung ano yung reason. Uh, kung connected ba itong dalawang ito sa isa't isa, mm -hmm. yung pinaka-reason bakit niya tinulak itong uh, Filipino-American uh, dito sa uh, moving train sa San Francisco, California. Okay. Alright, uh, uh, next. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. Ranking 6th in our countdown, the Department of Information and Communications Technology, or DICT, downplayed the recent hacking of its disaster risk reduction and Management Division, or DRRMD, portal and system. The breach only compromised, compromised the DRRMD systems, which is not connected to the central office system. Hackers only got the data of 10 employees and involved about 230 megabytes of data. The ICT under Secretary Jeffrey E.N.D. said the data breach helped them in identifying their systems lapses. Oh, right. oh, so, hacking incidents hacking have been incident uh, on again. the rise. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, and of course, we had Senator Honasan also here last week talking about the need uh, to invest more in cybersecurity cyber security. because it's oh. it's not it's you can no longer call it an emerging threat because it is already a current threat. Already. Totoo yan. Uh -huh. Totoo yan. Tapos aside from that, I, I was also looking at this article mm -hmm. uh, today. Na meron din uh, uh, possible or data breach happen. Alam mo kung saan sa mm -hmm. Department of Foreign Affairs. Diba? Uh, kasi itong cyber security group, yung Deep Connect, diba sila yung yes. uh, laging nag, uh, nagpo-post ng mga, mga, ang tawag dito, mga uh, nahahack na mga website. Ayan, sila ang nagsabi nga itong uh, 
uh, Department of Foreign Affairs ay merong nangyaring uh, data breach nito nung Wednesday. Pero mamaya, pag-usapan yes, natin yan may... because... Ay, hindi pa pala ready. <laughs> so ngayon, <laughs> pag-usapan natin yung sinasabi ko. No? So sa DFA, sinabi ng Deep Web Connect, mm. uh, they were claiming na may nangyaring ang hacking incident or data breach naman ano, dito sa DFA which happened nung Wednesday. So we need to uh, clarify that with what kind of data breach? Yes, what kind? Ano yung mga uh, ano yung mga Actually, repository ito, na access? Sabi nila sensitive email data mm. is now being sold online. Sensitive email in, in other words correspondence between Oo. what? Employees between uh, ASEX, USEX alam. or the diplomatic so, corps. Supposedly the threat actor identified as Chengi. Yan, ito yung uh, reportedly behind mm. the bri the breach and uh, uh, it is currently uh, unknown if the data involves just a single or bulk email. Yun yung sinasabi Oo. mo. Hindi pa alam. Pero Oo, tsaka it is being sold alam online. If it's, if it's, with, it's within uh, amongst employees mm -hmm. or correspondence between uh, high-ranking mm -hmm. officials of the DFA and other officials of government. Mm -hmm. So yung initial uh, findings nga nitong uh, Deep Web uh, Connect team, sabi nila, they found out na may mga sample na provided na conte, uh, na contents ano, or sensitive documents na naka-mark doon confidential doon. Mm, so, okay. yun ang hindi pa natin alam ano, na yung pinaka buong detalye ng uh, data breach na yan na nangyari sa Parang every day. other day or every week we're uh, talking about hacking incidents already. Exactly. No? Uh, oh. You have a lot of threat actors. Eh? But uh, we have with us on the line uh, Yusek at Jeffrey E&D of the DICT. Good morning Yusek. Thank you for joining us. Magandang uh, umaga po Angelo at Angela. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, you said you were, you were talking about, uh, I think, in, in a previous interview about yung, uh, learning about uh, yung, uh, what lapses we have uh, due to the hacking incidents. Ano po yung mga learning na nakita nyo, Yusek? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Angelo. Uh, regarding the recent ones? Or? Yeah. Well, in general, sorry, kasi medyo escalating yung number of incidents already yeah, of hacking. Sa, and then the uh, recent one is with the... Uh, DRRMD. DRRMD, oo. Oh, yes, uh, Yusek. Mm -hmm. So, yung sa DRRMD website, that's a very isolated website uh, mm -hmm. nandito sa TICT, may mga learnings na tayo dyan uh, which we will we will share to all government agencies also. Mm -hmm. For example, okay. um, that particular website kasi has uh, lapses sa software development niya. Mm -hmm. uh, gumamit kalimbawa ng encryption mechanism that is not peer-reviewed. No? para nag-invent na sa inyo lang uh, uh, encryption mechanism. The ah, password okay. uh, module the password module was not hash. It was encrypted. which should not happen. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm sorry if I'm being technical, no, but there are... Let, let's just say that there are best practices in secure software development which was not followed in that particular case. Okay. Right, but right. Uh, malit, malit, malit lang naman yun. It's, uh, at ang karamihan sa ang laman nun ay puro equipment, no? Yung aming forward deployment of uh, government emergency communication. Yeah, I understand. Eh. Sabi nga daw po dito, ang DRRMD naman po talaga was intentionally designed to be easily uh, accessed ano, and, and had no firewalls. Pero I was wondering po, um, uh, Sek, ano, uh, Yusek, uh, dito po sa sinasabi nila na mga issues nga po na mga uh, hacking incident, ano, what are the other issues uh, that the DICT Cybercrime Force is facing right now? And uh, ano po ba yung mga nakalatag na plano po uh, to be able to fix uh, these problems. Ah, so the national cybersecurity plan was just um, was just adopted um, and ordered by the president to be followed no, under Executive Order 58. Uh, na release lang yan last April. Now um, this this national cybersecurity plan is a comprehensive uh, plan that started 2023, although promulgated 2024. But we were starting it since 2023. Kasama na dyan yung Pag ina, ito, kasama na dyan yung pag-adapt ng mga best practices ng mga opisina ng uh, gobyerno. Uh, pangalawa, kasama na rin dyan yung uh, pagpapalakas ng mga cyber security units sa loob ng gobyerno. Kasi yeah. mga cyber security positions eh, mm -hmm. sa loob ng gobyerno. Yung mga gano'n. Pero ma maidagdag ko na rin, Angelo, at saka Angelo. Yes, yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have to also be very careful about, you will notice the cyber security now, according to uh, some surveys, have increased yung trajectory niya sa, sa mileage, sa, sa media mileage. Mm -hmm. Kasi everybody is is very, very anxious about cybersecurity. Yes. But but in, in, in certain instances, 
minsan na sensationalize din siya not you ah yeah, but yes, there yes. are some uh, there are some websites for example Deep Web Connect mm-hmm. who just throws information mm-hmm. na unverified mm-hmm. eh, minsan kasi ganoon yung nangyayari halimbawa right. yung nangyayari sa DSA ano? yan yeah, ito nga po eh uh, oo uh, hindi pa siya verified but they just they just openly said oh by the way your data is being sold online sold. Oh, oh, oh. Pero uh, yeah. technically speaking, wala pa pong uh, confirmation from DFA. Wala pa. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, uh, plus, if you look at it from a very minute scale, uh, mukhang it's just one particular inbox that was compromised. Mm-hmm. Hindi naman yung buong email system ng DFA. It could be a phishing attempt, for example. Pero wala pa kaming... What I'm trying to say is, wala pa ka tayong general finding. Yes. Mm. Uh, uh, pero we're, we're, we're still coordinating uh, coordinating this. It, alam, alam niyo naman, pag DFA ang pinag-uusapan, yes, yes. This, this, this has a tendency to also uh, ma- 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 mahihirapan yung ating reputation kasi there are some communication exchange uh, discussions or agreements we have with some yes. of our... Mm. Uh, with some other countries which may be affected kapag right, sinabi right. natin na na compromise yung buong email ng DFA. Yeah. What we can say right now is that it's not. Okay. It's not. Yes, uh, you, you said I'd like to ask no, uh, whether you were saying kasi not all of uh, the hacking uh, reports coming out are are verified but uh, one uh, a very similar name sometimes come out with regards yung mga gumagawa nitong threat whether uh, totoo po silang uh, nakahack o hindi. Ano po ang nakikita natin? Is there a link uh, between all this noise? Or uh, is there one group doing this? Whether they want to sell fake, uh, hacked information or uh, verified information? Is there one group na nakikitig na natin? So there are several groups which are of uh, interest. No? Mm-hmm. Um, nahuli na natin just recently si Kang Kong. And, yes. Uh-huh. Uh, I understand that uh, they are implicating a journalist. Uh-huh. Um, uh, as part of this entire scheme no, of sensationalizing issues of cybersecurity. But there is another group of individuals by uh-huh. the name of PH1NS uh-huh. who was responsible for more than seven or six hacking incidents in government. Uh-huh. Um, we've already coordinated with NBI, with PNP, I mean, all of government's uh, police, uh, cyber, cyber crime related police units are. Yes, uh- are looking into into this particular personality. Itong recent man si Chen Yi, mm-hmm. bago ito eh. Ah, uh, okay. Pero when we look at, uh, ito yung sinasabi nila about BSA, bago ito, but when we are looking into his profile, uh, apparently nagbibenta rin siya ng data about some emails from the Taiwanese government, some emails about the Algerian government. Um, ah, so, okay. so we're also, yeah, this, this, particular individual, we may need to coordinate also with our international partners uh, regarding regarding his whereabouts. Okay. Uh, you said, Kasi, uh-huh. tinignan namin yung bridge forums niya, hindi lang Pilipinas. So, Marami. May, madaming kliyente. Taiwan ang okay. pinaka-prominent doon. Okay. Uh, yes, and you said, no, ka, uh, even if uh, it comes out in reports left and right na may mga hacking incidents, uh, data shows that uh, it went down. Yung cybercrime cases have declined by 36%. Now, what are the factors you think uh, behind the decline in uh, cybercrime incidents? I'm not sure. Depends on who's saying the data, because there are people data that say it's increased. But mm-hmm. year on year, based on last year, it's a decline. Na. Okay. Um, of course, this is what I'm saying. That some of our laws have been, um, have been. I, I know there's a lot of question about the SIM card registration law, but I, I think that also helps. No? Even though the scammers are now transferring to Messenger and other OTT devices, um, also, napansin yun naman that the ICT and our cybercrime units, including NBI, CICC, and the PNP, have been very, very active in all of these cases. Okay. Uh, so, so I think that also helps in reducing uh, cases of criminality, especially in cyberspace. All right, sige. Maraming salamat po sa inyong oras. That was uh, DICT USEC, Jeffrey Ian. Thank you so much. Salamat. Mm-hmm. Yun. Okay. So, year on year, niya, eh. year on year, may decline. Pero there's uh, prominent uh, names coming out. Yung isang name, hindi lang Philippines ang tinatamaan. You have Taiwan yes. and China also. Mm-hmm.
Oh. Pero yung, yung, yung sa usapin ng DFA, wala pa nga kasing uh, sinasabi yeah, ng walang DFA, confirmation. Na confirmation kung uh, totoo ba na nagkaroon ng data breach. Pero sinabi nga dito ni Yusek uh, ng DICT na uh, iniimbestigahan nila. Possible, may phishing na nangyari. Pero as, ngayon daw, he can say na wala pa namang nangyayari. Parang kasi breach. sinasabi ni Yusek, it's possible na there, there are threat actors on the deep web claiming that they have information from certain departments pero it does not mean if they claim they have this information na doon talaga nakuha they could be trying to sell info that is fake also may mga kalakaran daw na ganun that's why investigation oh. is ongoing yes okay pero all right uh, let's continue with our countdown coming in at our top 5 a recent survey of publicus asia shows a decline in vice president sara duterte's rating Duterte's approval dropped from 53% in the first quarter to 46% in the second quarter. Publicus Asia founder and CEO Malu Tikiya says former President Rodrigo Duterte is pulling down her daughter's ratings. Tikiya says issues that influence Sara's numbers include the investigation of ICC into her father's drug war. It has nothing to do with DepEd, everything to do with the political climate. You have to understand that it, that Duterte is a shared brand. So technically, whatever one says, it can influence uh, the incumbent. Oh. Sabi nga niya, yeah. yung ginawa nila itong survey na to, hindi pa yun yung nagre-resign si uh, uh, VP Sara, Sara as uh, Dep, uh, Deped Secretary. Secretary. At hindi pa rin siya uh, nat natalaga as the face of oh, the oh, new opposition. Oo, oh, totoo. Tapos yun nga daw, kasama, kasama rin naman doon dun sa tanong sa survey is kung dapat bang mag-resign yes. si uh, Vice Pe President Sara Duterte as the Secretary Sorry of, 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 of uh, Education. Mm -hmm. So, mataas din yung numero doon. Eh. Parang 60% yes. sabi ng mga, so of course, supporters and mm -hmm. other, uh, kasama doon, respondents, sabi nila, hindi, wag daw. Pero yun nga, uh, sinasabi niya, pero the burden was removed. No? This is, and I quote, that is uh, from uh, uh, Maluti Kia, na sinasabi niya, it will not affect yung approval uh, Kung magagawa ulit ng mga survey, it will not affect na yung approval rating niya doon sa ginagawa niya as Deputy Secretary before. Mm. So it will solely focus as uh, yung responsibility niya as the Vice President. As the Vice President. President. Oh, because her performance as the Deputy Secretary mm. reflects on the total performance of the Marcos administration. Yes. Kasi historically, mga performance ng cabinet officials, whether galing ka sa kabilang partido, na bumabagsak din sa presidente, sa numbers niya. Totoo, totoo. Ang nagiging rating, ang bulk rating ni Sara Dut, VP Sara Duterte is as vice president. Because as vice president, that is her uh, own identity yes. already. So that she's being measured on her own uh -oh. identity. But isa din yung sa napick up ko sa sinabi ni uh, uh, Maluti Kia, mm -hmm. yung uh, analyst natin na uh, in-interview sa story ko yesterday, is yung sinabi niya, Duterte is a shared brand. Mm -hmm. And pos yung possibility nga, or it is, no, na nangyayari nga, it is happening right now, na uh, si uh, former President Rodrigo Duterte is pulling down uh, mm -hmm. Vice President Sara Duterte. Correct. Because there are a lot of issues right now, like yung, di ba, sa ICC, yung pagtawag kay uh, uh, Pangulong Bongbong Marcos na ano, the among, addict, others. Among, others. among others. So that is possible talaga na maaring uh, mangyari na nahihila pa ba si uh, Vice President Sara Duterte dahil sa issues din ng kanyang tatay. Oh. Okay. Sige, nako marami pa tayong pag-uusapan. So let's continue with our countdown. Coming hot at the fourth spot is a fight against illegal pogos. The Philippines and China vowed to work together to fight against illegal pogos and other transnational crimes. The commitment was made at a meeting between Executive Secretary Lucas Bersamin and Chinese Ambassador Huang Xilian in the palace this week. The Philippines and China agreed to strengthen their intelligence, sharing, and joint operations. The Philippine Anti-Organized Crime Commission, or PAOC, said this agreement will boost their efforts in their illegal pogo crackdown. Hindi naman talagang pwedeng ikailan na kailangan natin yung mga information na nanggagaling din sa mga Chinese authorities. We need immediate verification para pag nahuli kagad natin sila, alam na kagad natin kung sino sila at malalaman din natin kaagad-agad ano yung naging, uh, ano yung criminal history nila. 
Oh, well, in China nga, bawal talaga yung pogo. Eh. Yeah, I mean, yun lang hindi ko makita ang, uh, yung logic ng iba is because sa China, outright ban pogo because they have other information that uh, crea- yung historically, ang operations ng pogo are run by uh, criminal syndicates who are using uh, legitimate pogos as fronts. Now, it's so hard to root it out because may, may cost implications din yan. Meron social implications, di ba? May moral implications din yan. Now, some lawmakers na, uh, are saying it's not worth it. Mm-hmm. At saka ano ba, susunod ba tayo dun sa, ano ba yung mga bansa na talagang kilala sa maging ano, gambling capital? Ano yung, Cambodia uh, outrightly banned uh, illegal pogos. Exactly, uh, di ba? Oh, oh. so, pogos right, in general pala. Ngayon oh, naman, oh. because of mainit talaga yung cracking ng mga Uh, illegal pogo sa mga mm. malalaking firms dito sa Philippines. Ang nangyayari daw ngayon, nagkakaroon ng mga mini mini, mini hubs, oh, mini hubs uh. which is parang uh, nangyayari sa loob ng condominium, sa apartment. Kaya nga sinabi, di ba, sa Tarlac nung uh, Vice Governor, yes, Pineda, uh. sabi niya mag-house to house daw to check uh, di ba, kung may mga nangyayari. Because ito mga mini hubs, sabi ni Winston, Spokes Winston, uh, Paok. Mm-hmm. Paok. Uh, galing din to daw sa ano, sa mga malalaking pogo na na-raid na nag-watak-watak uh, mm-hmm. para matuloy lang yung opera- operasyon, they branched out into mini villas, condominiums, oh. o para... So, alam natin yung mga, ang tawag dito, yung mga senator, or co- senators, mm-hmm. diba, they're calling outright ban ng pogo. But House Speaker Martin Romualdez is not in favor of a blanket ban on pogos. In a radio interview, Romualdez said the ban will lead to more underground operations. That means the government can no longer monitor these companies nor demand taxes from them. Romualdez says it's better to implement stricter regulations on pogo operations. Yet again, we have to take a look at both sides. Na naman, eh. oh, nga eh. Sa Senate naman kasi Senate. majority of them are in favor of banning yes. pogos. Yes, makikita right. na naman natin yung, uh, kumbaga, anong tawag doon, disapproving points between the Senate and the Congress. Diba dati mm. yung charter change and a lot of issues. Right now, pogos naman because majority of the, the Senate, uh, majority of the Senate, uh, mga senators sure. doon sa Senate ay uh, gusto nila na i-ban totally, outright ban yeah. ng pogo. But dito sa sa House of Representatives, nakita natin na medyo sabi nila, sundin ang batas, tignan natin, wag out, mm-hmm. wag, wag, wag blanket ban. Ako naman siguro, uh, we should uh, check with our uh, uh, other countries, mga counterparts natin that have banned pogos as to ano yung nakita nilang mga reasons. Baka they have intelligence info na wala tayo. Like Cambodia, tanong natin, ano yung nakita nyo sa mga, ba't kayo nag-ban ng pogo outright? Mm-hmm. China, why isn't the... Uh, 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 online gaming allowed in China. Ano ba Ito nakita bang nila? Ito ba mga nangyari diba? dito sa atin ng mga scamming incidents, yung mga torture, et cetera, ng mga uh, transnational crimes under uh, behind these illegal pogos, ay hindi pa ba sapat <laughs> to ban uh, pogos here in the country? No, kasi if, if, May, mm. if the speaker is looking for data, mukhang he's willing to engage naman. Yeah. But he's looking, of course, for data. Siguro nga, para matapos na to, let's coordinate with other countries that have had pogos before and ask them, bakit nyo binan ang pogo? So at least meron tayong concrete uh, debate points na yung mga pro na iban yung pogo, meron silang panghahawakan na data. O ito, galing na to sa Cambodia, galing to sa China kung bakit ayaw nila ng online gaming. Mm-hmm. At least may pinahawakan tayo, hindi puro... Uh, raw data or haka-haka lang. Oh, hindi, hindi naman, ngayon, wala tayong haka-haka. Ang dami natin mga documents behind Oh nga. But I'm saying, as a general rule, kasi other countries have already measured kung bakit uh, hindi worth it ang Pogo. Mm-hmm. So we take that and show it to the people who are pro or not uh, pro-Pogo, yung ayaw mag-ban. O ito, ah. Ako, sa akin, yan lang nakikita natin ngayon na. No, but I'm saying kasi... I know, but... No, I'm, 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 I'm against uh, pogos. I'm just saying, ipakita sa mga taong gusto i-retain ang pogo. Yeah, yeah. Like a speaker. Oh, ito speaker, ito sabi ng Cambodia. Ito yung computation nila. Ito yung taxes na na-claim nila. Not worth it kung binangga mo sa ginastos. Ganon. Kasi some people have, uh, have that in mind eh. Mm-hmm. That they want to see data muna. But ako, based on what I've seen, Diba? It's, it, it's really not worth it. Easy. Torture videos eh, pa lang yun eh. Yung doon sa taxes na napag-uusapan, yung projected, uh, sabi nila na revenue na magagaling mm-hmm. sa Pogo, it's not even half of what they, uh, they have gotten from Pogos right now. So, ewan ko. Ang inaantay na lang din natin siguro yung outright na ano ba yung sasabihin ni Pangulong Bongbong Marcos regarding this. Like what I've said yesterday, tahimik pa eh, si uh, Pangulong Bongbong Marcos. Uh, yung talaga nang galing sa bibig niya na, oh, iban na natin to or wag natin iban. Ang mm. Pogo. Well, ba- based on uh, the tone ng speaker, it looks like he, uh, <laughs> the president will still uh, 
quietly discern na uh, kung ano yung magiging stand niya. Ako. But ito, usapin pa rin ng Pogo, pero tungkol naman ito, of course, dun sa politiko na na-implicate nga dito sa Pogo. Yan po ang ating uh, next sa ating uh, topic for today. The fingerprints of Bamban Mayor Alice Go does not match that of the other Alice Go. Elaine Folhensho with the report. Two women, both named Alice Lea Go and both having the same July 12, 1986 birthday. Their photos already show that they are not the same person. This was confirmed further by the NBI fingerprint analysis, which showed that their fingerprints were not a match. But the question now is, where is the other Alice Go who is not the mayor? Her last NBI clearance update was recorded in 2005. The NBI is considering the possibility that the other Alice Go might have been ordered to fall under that name. Fictitious ito. Ah, at hindi Alice Go ho ang pangalan niya. Nag, Nag-file lang, ginamit niya, Alice Go ho. May instruction na kumuha ka ng clearance under this name. These findings, however, don't have any effect on an earlier fingerprint analysis which showed that the mayor Alice Go's fingerprints matched those of Chinese passport holder Go Wang Ping. To confirm the results, the Comelec says they will conduct their own verification of the fingerprints. Take note, ang Comelec ay may sariling, NB, uh, may sariling hand, uh, handwriting and fingerprint experts. Kung meron ng NBI, meron din ang Comelec. Nasa amin ang COC. Nasa amin din ang application for registration as a registered voter. The Comelec says they will also request for a copy of the co-warranto petition that the Office of the Solicitor General eyes to file against the mayor. The Solgen says they are looking to file the petition within the week. In a statement, Senator Riza Hontiveros says that even if there are 10 Alice Goes found in the country, only Mayor Alice Go of Bambantarlac was a Chinese citizen who became a mayor. She noted that the investigation is for the Alice Go, who is not a Filipino. The NBI is set to present the new results of their tests in the next Senate hearing. Reporting for News 5, Elaine Fulhensho, BR1 News. Medyo magulo nga yan eh, kasi sa Edo, sa mga uh, reports na nakikita natin sa mga dyaryo, sabi nila there's a third Alice Go. Pero yun nga, nililinaw natin dito sa, sa, sa atin, di ba, na there's no third hmm. Alice Go. It's just that sinek yung prints ni Alice Go na Bamban Mayo. Bamban Mayo. And then uh, yung isa na, yung Go Wapping. Which that, is her, which is one like, in the same. One in the same, nag-batch. And then another one na Alice Go, yung nakita natin sa NBA na parehas ng pangalan, parehas ng uh, birthday, yeah. pero magkaiba ng fingerprints. So you have Because to... Yung, ito yung sinasabi na pangatlo, supposedly, uh, ay uh, pinuntahan nga yung bahay na address yeah. doon. Pero wala naman daw ganun na street at wala naman din nakatira na ganun ng pangalan. So you have two Alice Goes and one Go. Ano ang uh, pangalan niya? Alice Lial Go nga. No, you have two Alice Goes ah, na. Ah, yung Guahaping. Guahaping, oh. which is one with, with the one other Alice. One Alam mo, ang, daw, so <laughs> ang sinasabi nila, actually, uh, who's controlling the narrative is si Mayor Alice Go. Because she has all these agencies chasing after her storyline. Eh. <laughs> Isipin mo, one simple, well, not simple, one mayor very, who looks meek and ano, uh -huh. na madaming meme na naglalabas. Eh, you have multiple agencies investigating her and uh, little, little by little nga na pagdudugtong natin yung kwento pero nahihirapan sila idugtong yung kwento. Kaya sinasabi din ni uh, Comelec Chairman George Irwin Garcia, yeah. meron din silang ano dito, may file din sila ng uh, fingerprint ni Mayor Alice. So babangga nila uh, yung file nila. Din. Definitely, mag, ang magmamatch yung kay Bamban Mayor tsaka yung nasa, nasa, yeah, yeah, oh, nasa oh. Comelec, oh. diba? So, yun, kaya kaya nagkakaroon ng lituan na may tatlo, pangatlo pa na Alice Go, pero yun yun, yun yung ibig nilang sabihin sa pangatlo. Okay, Sige, pero... Nahilo din ako. Nahilo ka ba? Hindi <laughs> ko maano. Oh. Alright, uh, don't go away because we're not done yet. Ito yung inaabangan ninyo na ano nangyari kahapon. <laughs> Walk out pa more. <laughs> May dalawa pa. Stay with us.
Welcome back. You're still watching Brunch here on One News. Uh, Madaming pa tayo nga. Walk out pa more. Oh, okay. uh, a tale of uh, multiple mayors, finding Kibuloy. Daming issues talaga. Gosh, okay. Pero wala sila Kibuloy ngayon sa news. Wala rin si Tevez kasi ang daming balita. Oh. Oh, oh. Pero ito muna ha. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. The budget department is set to release 27 billion pesos mm -hmm. for the allowance of healthcare workers. The DBM says the funding will be issued by Friday in line with the directive of President Marcos. This will cover the payment of over 5 million remaining validated unpaid health emergency allowance. Also included are the COVID-19 sickness and death compensation claims of workers. DBM data shows that 91 billion pesos has been released for the public health emergency benefits and allowances. Some 73 billion pesos of that amount has been allocated specifically for health emergency allowance. Okay, coming in at top two. The Philippines and China held their first formal dialogue since the violent encounter in Ayungin Shoal on June 17. Foreign Affairs Under Secretary Maria Teresa Lazaro and Vice Foreign Minister Chen Xiaodong led the Philippine and Chinese delegations respectively. In a statement, the DFA says that although significant differences remain, there was substantial progress on developing measures to manage the situation at sea. Senator Francis Tolentino says meetings like this could be helpful as long as China is being genuine in its commitment. It has to be backed up by actions. Makita nila yung sincerity. The only proof that we, we would need would be sincerity. Pero kahit mag-usap, pero hindi pa rin nila pinapayagan yung ating mga mangingisda, mga mangisda sa Baho de Masindong, hindi pa rin hinaharang pa rin nila yung uh, rore. Eh, kahit saan taon tayo mag-usap. Well, uh, the mere fact na nakipag-usap nga sila, uh, during this uh, bilateral consultation uh, meeting at dumalo nga dito si uh, Chinese Vice Foreign Minister Chen Xiaodong ay uh, yun nga sabi nga nila medyo nagde-escalate na yung tension but after that sabi ko loko-loko tong uh, newspaper na to ha? <laughs> pinakita nila da etong powerful US uh, mid-range missile system na to ay uh, aalis na by September hmm. sa so, galing sa US nakita mo yung release <laughs> pero sabi nila kasi diba this is ano naman daw talaga ginamit lang for the training uh, during the training here nung mga nakaraang buwan so wag na daw bigyan ng kulay yung uh, pagpapaalis ng powerful uh, US mid-range missile system dito sa sa ating bansa but okay but at the end of the day nasunod din ng gusto din ng China magkaroon ng bilateral meeting diba ang basta ang mag-uusap lang ang kanilang narrative ay Pilipinas at China dahil Correct. sila lang daw uh, at stake in this issue. But of course, ito na, pumunta na tayo sa ating uh, number one. Our top story for today is another tension, but this time, it's in the Senate. Senators Nancy Binay and Alan Peter Cayetano clashed during a hearing about the construction of the new Senate building in Taguig. The tension was so high, it led to Binay walking out of the hearing. Here's the report. Ba't ka galit na galit sa akin ngayon na nire-review ko yung amount na yan? Ang goal ko lang, matapos ang building na to. At Paano nga matatapos? Siya, labing limang buwan yung pastry sa mesa maging... mo, wala kang ginawa. Meron. Senate Accounts Committee Chairman Alan Peter Cayetano and Senator Nancy Binay butted heads in a Senate hearing yesterday. The two were discussing the controversial construction of the new Senate building in Fort Bonifacio, Taguig City. Senate President Cheese Escudero earlier halted the project after he discovered that the billing has already reached 23 billion pesos. Binay, who previously headed the Accounts Committee, questioned Cayetano's report of the building's expenses. Binay argued that based on the data of the Department of Public Works and Highways, the building's Phase 1 to Phase 3 construction only costs 21.7 billion pesos. Cayetano rebutted this by saying that his data came from the Senate coordinating team that previously worked with Binay. Records to ng me. SCT, uh, uh, Senator Binay, that was given to me by the SCT. Who are your staff? Yes. Wait, so so what's the problem? No, no, ma'am. Ginugulo mo yung hearing. Okay. Eh, wala namang kailangang magulo. Yan ang sinabit sa akin. So kung sasabihin mo mali, edi, ano yung tamang number? Can Tumi we first. just go back? Listen, ang problema sa iyo, you keep going around saying, gusto ko makausap si Alan, gusto ko makausap si Cheese. Nakita pa tayo sa party, may cellphone, hindi mo na kami kinakausap. Tapos manggugulo ka ngayon sa hearing. 
Later on, Binay accused Cayetano of politicizing the project. Recall that the Binays and the Cayetanos were in a rift after the Supreme Court ordered the transfer of 10 Embo barangays from Makati to Taguig. Ikaw yung pumupunta sa media, sa radio, kung ano nung paninira, kung ano sinasabi mo sa akin, sabi mo may sumasaksak sa likod mo, hindi kasuhan mo ng attempted Ay. murder. Sino ba sumasaksak sa likod mo? Sasabihin mo sa media, may kilalaman to sa Taguig at Makati, tapos oh, pero... sasabihin mo may sumasaksak sa likod mo, ano iisipin nila? Pero Hindi sinabi ko ba na Alan Peter Caetano ang Hindi. sumasaksak pero... sa akin? Parang, di ba sabi nila yung pag nagre-react ng ganyan, baka guilty. Ma'am, basta sasabihin ko sa'yo, Lourdes ang pangalan mo, Hindi Marites. DPWH confirmed Binay's report that the construction of the new Senate building is not pegged at 23 billion pesos. After this confirmation, I pa, made my pa, point. Ulit, There's no pa, such ulit, thing as 23 pa, billion sa DPWH. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 21.7 billion. Kabu ang Kanaday. Ta tapusin natin na maayos to. Senado to ng Pilipinas, hindi to palengke. A Senate hearing about the new Senate building project will continue next week. Well, tapusin na yung hearing, hindi daw palengke. Pero the way, the way the narrative was going, parang ang nasa palengke si Senator Alan Peter Cayetano eh. How he was talking, calling even the... Ayun na naman kung palengke, di ba? Yeah, but it's nothing wrong. I'm saying, di ba, tinawag mo pa akong marites ng isang senador. Don't go, don't resort to name calling. Continue the debate kung gusto nyo. Kasi sabi nila, when you argue daw, stick to the topic. Kasi when you go low, ibig sabihin, you lose your argument. You're losing substance sa argument mo. Pero ang sarap nung kain ni Senator Rano doon, no? Oo, si Senator Robin Padilla, no? Robin Padilla. Ano ka nakain yan? Yummy yan, ha? Pero yun nga, no? Parang iniisip ko nga, ilang hearings na naman kaya yung mangyayari dito sa ongoing investigation nila? Dito sa... Investigation ba matatawag to? No, ah... Looking into. Looking into. Hindi, tsaka sinabi nga ng ibang senators, the longer that this construction is halted, mas malalaki ang cost na may incur exactly. every Saka delay. Exactly. Tsaka malaki din ang ginagastos kapag malaki nagkakaroon ng hearing itself. Ha? Yes, oo. Oh, oh. So, pero yun nga, ang sabi nga dito, yung phase 3 naman yung na-halt. Oo. Oh, oh. Diba? Yung phase 1, which is estimated na magkaroon ng uh, nagastos na 8.9 billion, yun yung core and shell, kasama hmm. ng mga furniture, yes. etc. Phase 2, estimated cost nito ay 2.5 billion. Uh, ito yung uh, fit-out package including, ito na pala yung uh, furnishing at saka yung sa tiles. Yung nagka-issue sa mga tiles na oh, pwede oh, naman siguro Siguro, uh, not, parang, ma mamahal daw kasi. not the most expensive, but uh, that oh, looks nice naman. Oh, oh. So, phase, phase 3, yun yung sinasabi nila na additional 10.33 billion, uh, yun yung works to complete. Pero, uh, yun nga yung uh, tinatanong dito, tsaka yung sinabi ni uh, Senator uh, Nancy Binay na parang bumabalik lang daw. It's all coming back. Diba? Yung nangyari na hearing before, kasi, yung sa issue nung sa parking lot yes, sa Makati. Sa Makati. Oh. Wow, Kasi for context, the Binays and the Cayetanos uh, have no love lost. Uh, because <laughs> nag-aaway sila, because recently nakuha yung mga Embo Barangays, di ba? Oh, from oh, Makati. Yes. Kasama lang yan sa mga pinag-aawayan. No, oh. just for context na. Yes. From Makati all the way back to Taguig. So nagkaroon ng jurisdictional problems pa nga sa BGC. Nag-aaway-aaway sila kasi taxes ng BGC is malaki-laki. Mm -hmm. So kung sinong ang uh, kukuha ng taxes nito, malaking bagay, di ba? So, ang dami issues within these two families. Actually, sabi nga, oh, sige, to be fair, hindi naman talaga dapat nandiyan dyan si uh, Senator Nancy Binay sa, sa, uh, sa hearing na yan because uh, hindi na siya yung uh, chair committee ng uh, finance. Hmm. Pero ang hinihiling niya kasi, to be fair din, ay kausapin daw siya. Oo. Uh, dahil, I think, uh, nagkaroon ng consultation dun sa dating Senate President. Mm. Yes, nagkaroon niya uh, sa confirmation na, uh, coordination rather, na kay uh, Senator Tito Soto yeah. at saka dun sa dating uh, Finance Committee Chair na si uh, Senator Panfilo Lacson mm -hmm. regarding this. Pero siya yung previews, hindi daw siya tinanong. Mm. Diba? Uh, To be fair nga, sabi ni Senator Panfilo Lacson doon sa mga unang-unang interviews niya nung pumutok itong issue na ito. Looks above board naman daw. Sabi niya, to, at saka to be fair, wala pa namang inilalabas na pera para dito sa phase 3 yes. ito si Senator Nancy Bina. Because she also herself questioning DBWH, ano tong mga additional yes. na 10.3 na ito. Yun yun, yun yung sinasabi niya. Mm. Pero nauuwi sa ganitong uh, ano, diba, mga senator kayo eh, diba dapat... Uh, Maging ehentro kayo ng maayos sa pag-uusap, issue-based, dapat, walang 
uh, personal lang. Compared sa ibang mga parliament o senate uh, Sabi, or... Hindi mo uh, nag-aanuhan pa ng ballpen. May, may, may isa nga, <laughs> nagsaksak ng ballpen. At lapis. Ballpen yung isa, tapos yung isa may lapis. Tapos hinabol niya yung sinaksak niya. Tapos binato ng sapato sa Taiwan to. Ay, And you have, oh. oh, you have sa Greece also. Ang daming ganun. So medyo kalmado pa tayo sa Philippine Senate. Basta I therefore oh. conclude, buhay na ulit sa Senate. Pero Peter it does, Cayetano. Ito, <laughs> since ang problema natin ay Senate building, ito ang quote. It does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. Mm -hmm. A quote by Confucius. Keep kaya, moving forward. Oh, kaya wag stop ang construction daw. Oh, wag stop at oh. wag din stop ang panonood sa atin. Dahil tomorrow, pangako yung babatiin namin yung iba pang hindi namin nabati na nanonood sa atin. Both and, sa Facebook at sa YouTube. Okay, and that wraps up today's episode of Brunch. Join us again tomorrow. I'm Angela Lagunsad Castro. And he is Angelo Caso III. We are One News, all sides, all the time. Pengin puto. <laughs>